Hi, Peter here from Wonders Truck again. Um, and time for a little bit more kitchen table science. And I thought what we do today is something a little bit more technical. This involves a little bit more fiddly work. And we're going to make a helium blimp. Okay, so to do this, we're going to need a few more kind of technical tools, but let's start with the basics first. Uh, a pair of scissors, a roll of electrical tape, a balloon, a plastic drinking straw. We've got a double um, AA battery holder with two batteries in it. Now we have here a small electric motor. Now this is very small. This is the kind of motor that's used to cause your phone to vibrate, stuff like that. It's called a pager motor and it's got a propeller fitted to it. Now you can buy these from uh, model shops and things like that. So if you just search uh, the internet for pager motors, then you'll probably come up with somewhere uh, for where to buy them. Now we've also got here a super capacitor. Now this is what we're going to use to store the electrical energy because batteries are too heavy for, um, for our balloon to carry. Now it's important you get the right type or the right specifications. Now this one is, you can see written on it hopefully, two and a half volts, 10 farads. Um, now you don't want to get anything bigger than that because the problem with these is they can store uh, the bigger ones, uh, quite large amounts of energy, some of them large enough to actually kill you. Now this doesn't, this is you know nice and safe, we can charge this up and it's not going to cause you any harm. So two and a half volts, ten farads, that's what you need for this project. Uh, we've also got a small piece of, um, we call this burger alarm wire or bell wire, it's just two strands of wire joined together, uh, we've got a small length there, it's about 15 20 centimeters or so we have then got four boot lace ferrules now these are used for joining wire and if you want to see exactly how to use them have a look at our other video which deals with joining wires and uh, there'll be a link somewhere floating around on the screen for that and then a pair of crimping pliers or crimping tool oh and don't forget a cylinder of helium for inflating our balloon. Oh, and a nice cup of tea. You mustn't forget the cup of tea. That's very important. Now, the first step in building this is to join our motor to this piece of wire. Now, you might be able to see that I've cut and strip the wires so they're kind of staggered. Yeah, so the red wire is a bit longer than the blue wire and I've also cut and stripped the wires on this so they're a bit staggered. Now the reason for that is that when we join them, because we're going to use metal ferrules, that they won't touch, so this won't short circuit. If they were opposite each other, when we push them into this tube here, they would touch and you'd end up with a short circuit and uh, your thing wouldn't work. So what we need to do firstly is just twist the ends of the wires so they're nice and tidy. We then get our ferrules, let's join the blue wire first. We put the two wires together like so and then push them twist it together like that, push them into the ferrule. That. We then get our crimping tool. Like I say, if you want more details on how to use these, check out our other video. Ugh. That's what you have to be careful of. As I said, this is a little bit fiddly. Push that into the ferrule again. And squeeze nice and hard. And there we are. Those two wires are now pretty securely joined together. 
and it's a pretty nice lightweight joint. Now, you can, if you want, obviously solder the wires. Um, if you have a soldering iron, you might find that a little bit more convenient, but um, this is a nice tidy way of doing it without the hassle of burning yourself and inhaling lead fumes. Obviously, if you're using lead-free solder, then that won't be a problem either. So, there you go, let's crimp those two together. Oops, there, and we have a nice join like that, and these two metal bits can't touch together and can't short circuit. Right, the next thing we want to do is we want to check which way we need to connect up the capacitor. Um, the capacitor obviously acts like a battery, it has a negative wire and then the other one is positive. One of the wires will be marked and you can see this has a band painted down it and you can see the negative signs on there which tell you this is the negative wire and by elimination this is the positive wire. So check the polarity of your capacitor. Now to charge your capacitor what you need to do is you need to find the negative pole of the battery which is this one the bigger one is the negative and connect the negative to that and the positive to that now just hold it like that with the wires touching for 10 20 seconds or so and that will transfer energy from the batteries into the capacitor that should do the trick now we want this propeller to blow air in that direction because we're going to fit our motor on the back of our blimp. We don't want the propeller on the front because if it's on the front when it crashes into things the propeller is the thing that's going to get damaged. If it hits somebody and tangles up in their hair it's a bit of a problem as well. So I've just taped this to the top of the glass. If you're working with a partner they can hold it rather than do it this way uh, but this is quite easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the capacitor leads to the battery or sorry to the motor leads like this and see which way our propeller turns round. Right, now I can feel that that's blowing air in this direction, which is the wrong way for us. We want it to go the other way, so we simply reverse our capacitor like this and touch like so. So now I can feel that the propeller is blowing air that way, which means when we put this on the back of our balloon, it's going to actually push the balloon forward. So if you've got a Sharpie pen or a marker pen, something like that, just put a red dot on this wire and that will connect to the positive on there and the other one to the negative. Sorry, no, other way around. So the negative connects to this wire. You can see why this is a little bit fiddly. The negative connects to this wire and the positive to that one. Now, I don't have a marker pen to hand, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this wire uh, a little bit shorter, and then I'll be able to tell the difference. No, actually, that's a little bit longer. I'll keep it as it is. Right, so the slightly longer wire is the negative wire. Remember that, because I won't, and I'll get it wrong. Right, so next thing we do is we thread the wire, and I've only got a very small, thin straw here, you probably do with a slightly thicker one. We thread the wire down there like that, taking care when we get to these ferrules, because we don't want to snap the wires that we very carefully fitted in, like so. Right, this can come off of here now. And we can uh, reuse our piece of tape, reduce, reuse, recycle, to fix our motor onto the end of the straw. Like that. There we go. Now, it was the longer wire went to the negative, I'm sure. Right, so that's what we're going to do. The longer wire goes to the negative which is this one to this wire here. Now we're going to do, we're going to connect them the same way as we did before using ferrules. 
Um, so we just need to get a couple of those. Like so. So we're going to put these two together. I'm going to poke the wire into the ferrule. We're going to get our crimp tool. Put that in there. Like that. There we go, we've got a nice joint there. We're going to bend that wire downwards. Oops. And then we're going to do the same. Oh, forgot that, that was actually charged up. Now, if we just connect this to discharge the capacitor, and we are checking that that's blowing in the right direction as well, so that's fine. Um, now, you can see that this will actually run for about, probably about a minute or so, so it does store a fair amount of energy. Right, well, we won't hang around. Let's just connect this up, and it will discharge while we're doing it. And there we go, connection made. And again, we want to bend, bend our wire like so. Now there is a reason we do this. This is so that when we come to charge it, we can just touch the terminals of the battery. Remember the big terminal is the negative one onto here. And you can already hear the motor pick up speed, like so. It's definitely blowing in the right direction. So really, this is it. All we now need to do is blow up a balloon full of helium and, and fix this onto it. Right, so here we go. Uh, just open our valve. Now the thing with this is you want to blow the balloon up quite a lot um, because obviously if you don't put enough helium in it and your blimp doesn't float then you have to blow up another balloon. Um, so it's best to blow it up if anything too much because then you can always add a little bit of weight to it to make it neutrally buoyant so it doesn't rise and it doesn't sink. So here we go let's blow our balloon up. That should probably do for us. There we go. So we've got a nice balloon full of helium there. Hopefully we've put enough in it. Um, and then all we've got to do is connect our motor to the balloon. Now you can see I've already, or perhaps you can't, I've already cut a couple of little pieces of tape ready to stick our motor on. So what we want to do is we want the straw so that the propeller is far from the balloon because we don't want the propeller hitting on the balloon otherwise the balloon will pop. So we pop that on there like that. Just a couple of bits of tape. On there like so. And another one on the front. Now, you want to, if possible, kind of place your capacitor, which is one of the heaviest parts, slightly forward at the centre point, so it counterbalances the weight of the motor up there like that. And you want to make sure that the two wires on top are accessible, because that's how you're going to charge your um, capacitor up. So if we pop that there, I should really have cut another piece of tape. This is just jolly unprofessional, so let's cut it as we go. There we go, a piece of tape. Like so. Now hopefully my bits of wire are fairly accessible. Right, so now we're just ready to charge up um, for our maiden voyage.
Right, there we go. Turn it over and. Oh, what did I say about not filling the balloon up enough? Right, okay, we've actually uh, filled up another balloon, a nice purple one this time, with a bit more helium, so it's a bit more buoyant. In fact, it's a bit too buoyant. So we've added a bit of uh, modelling clay to the front there just to bring it down a little bit. And it's pretty much neutrally buoyant. Now, our propeller is turning, but we're just going to add a little bit more power to it. Like so. And a presto. Off it goes. Now it does actually run around in circles. It is circling above the camera at the moment. Oh no, off it goes. But anyway, a good fun project. Um, and it's something perhaps you thought you could never make yourself, but it is actually not that difficult. The difficult bit comes if you want to try and control it with radio control and stuff like that, because obviously you need a much bigger balloon to support the extra weight. But that's probably not something we're going to deal with in the near future. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that project. Do check out some of our others. Uh, subscribe to us, Wonderstruck How, and also check out our other channel, which is Wonderstruck Wow, and you can see some nice explosions and stuff like that over there. So thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully see you again soon. Bye. Do this with tape. Careful.